We've programmed the alien ships to fly across the screen, but now we need to get them to fire missiles at us. So let's get coding. Hi, and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I'm Bob Grant, and this is Lesson 11 in the Asteroids course. In the last lesson, we got as far as programming the alien spaceships so they can start at either side of the screen and then fly across. So now we need to add the ability for us to be able to shoot them, and also for them to shoot back at us. So we'll have to look at how they can aim their missiles so that they can hit our ship. So let's get straight into the code and start programming. So the first bit of code we're going to have a look at then is allowing us to shoot the alien ship. And you're going to have a go at this yourself. So let's have a look and give you some hints as to where to look. So we want to be able to shoot the alien ship and we know that in our do play game function, this is where we do a lot of our main um, function calls. So we know that our do play game function moves the various objects around the screen and then it starts checking to see if certain events have happened. So we have a function here called check um, bullet hits and, and that function at the moment loops through each of our individual bullets, so each of our player bullets. It then checks each bullet against each of our asteroids and works out if the bullet is hitting that asteroid. If it hits that asteroid, it then calls a function called explode asteroid, which handles making the explosion effect and updating the um, scoreboard and so on. So we really want to duplicate that block of code, or at least edit that block of code, or edit a copy of that block of code, so that instead of um, checking each bullet and checking it against asteroids is going to check each bullet and check it against our alien ship. So it's going to be very, very similar code. So I want you to go and have a look at that ch um, function check bullet hits. Inside that function, you leave what's currently there, but you'll then need to copy the main loop that loops through each bullet and then modify that so that it loops through each bullet but checks hits against the alien ship. It will then call a function called explode alien ship, which will create an explosion where the alien ship is, update the score, and then reset our alien ship so that it respawns after a short amount of time. So have a look at that, have a go at programming it, and say, I'll give you a few seconds break in here, and then I'll come back and show you my solution to the problem. So see you in a wee bit. So let's have a look at this check bullet hits function. So if I just make this a smaller font size. So we can see in our, in our font size here. So we are, at this point here, we're looping through each of our player bullets. And we're then, for each bullet, we're looping through each of our asteroids. And then we're first of all doing this course um, check on our asteroid to see if our bullet is actually anywhere near the asteroid. And then once we know that we're near the asteroid, we do our more um, computing expensive task, which is the point and polygon function, to work out if our bullet is actually inside the polygon that makes up the asteroid. And at that point, if it is, we explode the asteroid. Uh, and this function, explode asteroid, then handles the removing the asteroid from the array and creating the explosion and updating any... Um, scores and so on. So really we want to do almost exactly the same for our um, alien ship. So let's have a look here. So let's go through and sort this out then. So we know that we want to take up all of this block here and we want to down here for our bullet. So that, that then takes us down to the end of our bullet. So let's copy that. And let's come in here, and this is going to be for our alien ship. And we'll paste that back in. 
So, so in our alien ship then, we're going to go through each of our player bullets. But then inside that check, we only have one alien ship. So we don't actually need this inner for loop. So let's take out this inner for loop here. And that was for each asteroid there. Let's just tidy this up a bit here. So we want to do a course check. So this check separation then. So we have our bullet position, which is what we want. We now, instead of our asteroid position, we want our alien ship position. And then our separation then is going to simply be our alien ship dot radius. And take that out. So that's our course separation then. So if our if the two, if the bullet position and the alien ship position are less than this alien ship radius, then the chance then the bullet is close enough to the alien ship to give us a hit. Okay, remember that's where we do our fast check. We then need to do our point in polygon. So we have our bullet position and then our alien ship. So that checks if our bullet is actually inside our alien ship shape. At that point, we kill this bullet. So table.remove, we're taking this bullet out because it's now hit something. And we now want to explode the alien ship. And that's going to be a new function that we're going to write in a second. So let's just take that out here. And that should be now us able to check for our bullets hitting our alien ship. So remember, so it's exactly the same idea. We're going through each of the bullets of the player bullets. If it's close to the alien ship, then we check to see if it's actually inside the polygon. If it is, we kill this particular bullet and we then explode the alien ship. So we need this function then obviously, explode alien ship. So let's copy that and let's go down to our alien ship functions down the bottom here. So we have them all down here and we want to now put at the end here our function explode alien ship. And we want to do the end of that and that's the explode alien ship function. Right, so now we need to work out what's going to happen when we explode the alien ship. Now this explode alien ship function, we know that's going to be pretty similar to our explode asteroid function. So let's have a look at the explode asteroid function. Come in here. So in the explode asteroid function, we basically update our player score. We create an explosion sound effect. We then create the particle effect to give us the explosion. And we then handle removing this particular asteroid. And again, with the asteroids then, it then goes on to um, split the bigger asteroids up into smaller asteroids. So we, we don't actually need that bit for our alien ship. So really we're going to be updating score, sound effect, explosion, and then handling restarting the alien ship. So let's copy this block here. And let's go down to our explode alien ship function. And let's paste it in here. So let's just do that. Okay, so we're going to update the player score. So we don't need this bit here. So we're going to just give our, our player a score of, let's say, 250 for our, our alien ship. We're then going to play the sound effect. So we'll use the same sound effect that we've used for our asteroid just for now. Uh, and let's use the same explosion. So keep that the same. But then we've got to now um, respawn our ship. So we're going to reset the alien ship. Now we've actually already done that up here. So we have a function called end alien ship. And again, when, when we wrote that first, we, saw, we said that this would probably come in handy at different parts of our code. So this end alien ship sets the active flag to false, which tells the system that the alien ship is no longer being shown on the screen. And it also resets the spawn timer for us to this random value. So let's copy that 
And instead of then doing this table.remove, we will simply call this function end alien ship. And again, by, by splitting our code up into these little blocks and these little helper functions, you can see here that it then makes these new functions like exploding our alien ship much, much simpler. So we're simply updating the score, playing a sound effect, creating this particle explosion, and again, using that ready-made function. Uh, oh, one thing we need to change, of course, is that it's doing the particle explosion where the asteroid would have been, but we now want it to be where the alien ship um, is, so the alien ship. Um, and then we're calling this other helper function, which ends the alien ship, which will take it off the screen and then reset its spawn timer. So hopefully, with fingers crossed, this should let us now shoot the alien ship. So let's run that with Control R and let's see what happens then. So we're just going to be waiting now for the alien ship to appear. And once it appears, Hopefully we should, if we can hit it, and there we go. And we've got a score as well. So let's see if it comes back again. And, and there we go. Now, if I just pause the video at this point, there's one thing which I've just noticed that went wrong there. So let's just go back a wee bit and watch the score as I hit the alien ship in that last little encounter. What we'll find is that the bullets are actually hitting the ship after it's exploded. So let's have a look and see what's going wrong and see if we can actually fix that. If we go back to our check bullet hits function, looking in here, this is where we actually then detect our bullets hitting the alien ship. And one thing we forgot to, or at least I forgot to do, is in this, we, we run through each bullet and we check if it's hitting the alien ship. But we know that our alien ship is, is only active when its active flag is set to true. Now, when we set the flag to false, as we do when we explode the alien ship, that doesn't actually stop it having a position and a radius. So this function here is actually ignoring that active flag and just checking to see if our bullet is currently hitting the position of the alien ship. So what we need to do is to make sure that it doesn't perform this check if the alien ship is not active. So inside here then, we need to do an if, and we want to do if our alien ship dot active, we only want to do this um, for loop if our alien ship active is true. So let me just um, step these in a bit here. And after that, then, of course, we need to do our end for our if active. So what this should do now is when we shoot our alien ship, the very first button, or sorry, the very first bullet that hits our alien ship will call this function explode alien ship. And as we saw, that then creates the explosion, but also then ends the alien ship, which sets the active flag to false and then resets its timer. So when we come back here again, and the next check then for our bullets, this alien ship.active will be false. So it won't actually check any more bullets against this alien ship. And that will then stop those repeated hits coming through. And actually, while we're here, I've forgotten to put the word then at the end of this line. So that's part of our if statement. So if alien ship dot active equals equal true, then we do the checking for bullets, otherwise we don't. So let's give that a go and see if that's actually working. So in here, and let's um, just get out of the way of that asteroid. Let's see if we can get this alien ship coming into view. And there we go. And there we hit them, we get 250 points. Let's try the next ship. Oh, I'm trying very hard to hit him a couple of times, so here we go, and there we go. And I don't think any more bullets hit the alien ship. Okay, so that gives us now um, the ability to hit the alien ship and explode him. So let's give him the ability then to fight back. As the alien ship moves around the screen, it needs to continually work out what direction it needs to fire its missiles in to hit our player ship. 
so we'll need to do a little bit of mathematics to calculate this direction. We know the coordinates of our player ship and our alien ship. So let's call those XPYP for our player ship and XAYA for our alien ship. And this then lets us calculate an angle using the tangent. The tangent of our angle then is the difference in the Y coordinate values divided by the difference in the X coordinate values. So when it's time for our alien ship to fire a missile, it needs to calculate this tangent value by analysing those coordinates. And then we can turn that back into the actual aiming angle by taking the arc tangent of the answer to our calculation. But taking a simple inverse tangent won't always give us the correct answer. The inverse tangent simply returns the primary angle that relates to that tangent value. Now our angle could be any other quadrant in the whole circle. So we need a special function, and indeed TIC80 and most other programming languages have that built in. So we use the arctangent2 function, and that not only does the inverse tangent, but also does another number of checks to find out exactly which quadrant that our angle is in. And that then returns us back the true aiming angle, which is what we want. Now, if you're not familiar with this mathematics and this trigonometry, then don't worry. Um, all the equations that you need to use and to implement in your software are, are on the diagrams above. So simply follow that through, implement those, and you will end up with the correct answer. So this lets our alien ship work out the exact angle and direction it needs to fire its missiles to hit the player ship. But that's probably not absolutely fair, because the alien ship will then be exactly targeting our player ship with every single bullet. And that's going to be very hard to um, avoid. So what we need to do is to create a little bit of a spread on the values that get returned in our targeting system. So our alien ship will fire randomly either side of this exact angle. So it may well shoot exactly at the player ship, but in general it will be somewhere close to the player ship, which gives us a bit of a chance to be missed or, or to avoid the actual missile. So once we've calculated this spread angle, we simply need to then add that on to our aiming angle, and that will give us then our very final firing angle. So that's the theory behind the aiming function for the alien bullets. Now I'd like you to have a go at coding this, but what we'll do is we'll break the coding process into two blocks. In this first block, what I'd like you to do is to code the actual bullet firing mechanism. So our alien ship should appear on screen, and it should then start firing bullets at the player ship. And for mine, I'm going to go for one bullet at a time on mine. But we've seen there how we can work out the direction of the bullet. So your alien ship should fire a bullet. That bullet should be aimed towards our player ship, again with that slight angle variation. It should travel at a certain speed, which you can set, and for a certain amount of time, which you can set. And then once it, is, it has timed out, it should remove itself from the screen and then allow the alien ship to fire some more bullets. So the first thing I want to do is to, is to get that block of code done. Don't, don't worry about the actual collision detection first off. Once we've got the alien bullets firing, then we can work on collision detection. So I'm going to split this down again into a couple of stages for people who want to have different tries. So if, if you feel you've got enough information already now to write that code, then, then please go ahead and do that. I'm going to give a few second break on the video here, and after that I'll give some hints as to how you can code this. So just walk you through the general ideas, and then have another break. Um, so if you feel you're okay after that, go ahead and code it. And then after that second break, then I will go through my actual coding solution so you can see how I did it, and any, any problems hopefully you'll then see where I did it, and how you can fix your code. So if you're ready for a go, Ha um, stop the video now. Otherwise, I'll have a chat with you in a few seconds about how you might go about solving this. See you in a second. So looking at a possible solution then, 
we know that um, our bullets and so on, they're all going to work in exactly the same way. So I'm creating a little alien bullets array here. I'm then going to say how many, what's the maximum number of alien bullets can be on screen at the same time. And I'm going to say one. So what's going to happen is the alien ship is going to fire a bullet. That bullet is going to then move across the screen at this um, defined speed. It's going to last for a certain number of ticks before it dies, so it will automatically kill itself after a certain time. Uh, and the alien ship then will, will fire one bullet, and when that bullet dies, it will immediately then fire the next bullet. So it's only ever firing one bullet at a time, but it is a continuous stream. We've already said then that the bullet aiming will need to be modified by a slight angle, just to give a bit of variation. So I'm creating this constant here called alien bullet aim, which I'm setting to 60 degrees. So that's the total spread of bullets. Um, again, in radians, that becomes math.pi divided by 3, but that is 60 degrees. So it's going to be 30 degrees either side of the true aiming between the alien ship and the player ship. So that sets up all the data that we need to describe our, our bullets. We now need to work out how they're going to fit into our code. So we really need a place in our code where the software understands that our alien ship is in motion and that we can actually start firing some bullets. So if we go to our do play game um, function, which is here, <clears throat> we can see that we um, every tick cycle we come through and we do a move alien ship. Now we, we could create a new function which would be um, handle alien bullets, but it makes sense to sort of that's where we're doing a lot of our alien ship control, where we're deciding whether the alien ship should be spawned or not. So it makes sense that we could probably add in there the fire control system. So let's go to our move alien ship um, function. And we see in here then, so we're saying if our, if our alien ship isn't active, then we're doing our, our countdown timer towards its spawning. Else, then our alien ship is active at this point. So we're updating its position. We're um, controlling its movement across the screen. We're controlling it changing direction. Um, so at this point here, so after we do our controlling the ship direction, it makes sense that we, we could put in here then our test to see if we need to fire a bullet. So basically, if, if we've got space in our alien bullets array, so, so we won't, we've got less than the maximum number of bullets, and of course that's only going to be one at this case, but if we do it as a general case, so we check how many bullets are currently in the array, and if that's less than the maximum number, then we can fire another bullet. And we simply then will call a function called fire alien bullet. And then that's going to then handle creating the alien bullet, putting it into the array, and then setting up its timers and so on. Uh, and once that bullet has been put into the array, then we will up in our do play game function. So back to our do play game function. Up in here then, we're going to have some sort of move alien bullets. So we've got the move player bullets here. So after that, then we'll do our move alien bullets. So for the moment, that's as far as we're going to go just for now, is to get the bullets um, being generated firing them at the player ship and then getting them to move on the screen. And of course our, our move alien bullets will have to count down that timer inside the alien bullet object. And when that counter hits zero then of course it kills that bullet. And that then lets the system then fire a new bullet. So don't worry about doing the collision detection at the moment. Let's just get some bullets firing and making sure that it does it um, one at a time and that those bullets then are pretty much heading towards our player ship. So let me give you a bit of a countdown on that and then after that I'll take you through my version of the software. So see you in a few seconds. So let me take you through how I coded this bit of um, the software. So we've already seen then that we create 
um, are arrays to hold our ship and bullets. And then I've created a number of constants which are going to define how these bullets work. So I'm saying that the maximum number of bullets is going to be one, their speed's going to be two, they're going to live for 60 um, ticks, and then this um, variation in my aiming angle is going to be 60 degrees or, or, or plus or minus 30 degrees. So if we go down to our do play game function, this is where our main game loop is. So we know, uh, we've already said that our move alien ship function, that's where we're going to actually handle the spawning and firing of our alien bullets. Once we've fired the bullets then, we're going to have a move alien bullets function, which is going to move them on the screen, again, if, if they exist. And we're going to have to then have a draw alien bullets function which will physically put the sprite on the screen. And again, I'm, I'm going to use a different colour sprite for my alien bullets. So if I go across to the sprite editor, I have created, in, in sprite number 16, I've created a different coloured bullet. And that's what I'm going to use for these alien bullets. So back to my code editor then. So we said that in the um, move alien ship function, that's where we're going to handle the firing. So let's go and have a look at what we've got in there. So the move alien ship function. So this is our, our already existing um, handling it spawning, then handling it actually being moved and changing direction and so on. So after that, this is where we now want to see if we are able to fire an alien bullet. So I'm looking here, and again, this is very similar to the way we did the player bullet stuff. I'm looking at how many bullets are currently live in the alien bullets array. And if that's less than the maximum number of bullets we're allowed to have, then we can fire another bullet. And again, for us here, max alien bullets is going to be one. So we're going to fire a bullet. It will then travel. It will either hit the player ship or, or time out. And at that point it gets removed so our system can come back in here. And once that first bullet has finished its firing cycle, then it will be able to fire the second one. And again, so we'll end up with um, one bullet being fired at a time. So let's have a look at the fire alien bullet function. So fire alien bullet. Uh, let me just drop to a smaller font size here. So the idea is that we first of all need to work out what direction the bullet's going to fire in. So I'm creating a local variable here called direction, which is going to be my final firing angle. But to get there, we first of all need to find the actual angle between the alien ship and the player ship. And this is where we're using this math.atan2 function. And really the parameters we pass into that are the two position differences. So the y position difference here, so this is our, our player ship dot position y minus our alien ship dot position y. And then the x position difference comes in as the second parameter. And this a tan 2 function then will return us back a, an angle, again in radians because we're working, this is the way that tick 80 works, based on the tangent calculated by dividing these two values together. So our angle to ship after this line of code will be the actual angle between the alien ship and the player ship. We then want to generate a random angle variation. So again, I'm creating a little local variable here. So we know that alien bullet aim is the full range of values we want to have. So that gives us our full 60 degree spread. So remember what we do here is we have our math.random function. So that will give us a number between 0 and 1. We multiply it by our full range. And then we add on our starting point, which in this point case is taking away half of our spread. So this will give us a random number between minus our bullet aim over 2. So in other words, minus 30 degrees and plus 30 degrees. So our final aiming, our final firing direction then, is simply going to be the angle that we've calculated, the exact angle to the ship, and then adding on this angle variation. So that will then take our angle to ship and then give it plus or minus up to 30 degrees. 
we have this keep angle in range helper function, which again keeps us in our zero to two pi range. So if we get any negative angles or, or angles greater than two pi, it just keeps it back inside that range. And, and that's really just for our own, our own benefit. So we now have the angle or the direction for our alien bullet velocity. So we now need to create that bullet. So this is us creating our bullet object. So again, we're using one of these Lua tables. We have to give it a position. So that position then is just going to be the same as our alien ship. So our bullets will be generated in the center of our alien ship. We give it a velocity. And the speed then is going to be that constant we defined. So that makes it easy for us to, to change that as we tweak it. The direction then, of course, will be this direction we've just calculated. And we're going to then create this timer. And that timer then, we're going to set that initially to the alien bullet time, which of course was set to 60 ticks. So that's everything we need inside our bullet object. And we're simply then going to insert that into our table. So remember our alien bullets is the table that holds our bullets. And we're going to put in this particular object we've just created. And then we're going to make a bullet firing sound. And I've just really copied the player ship firing sound and just changed the pitch on that. So this then, so this function, um, fire alien bullet. So we call that, this generates our bullet, sets up all the parameters inside that bullet, puts it into our alien bullets array, and then that's all it needs to do. We then know that in our do play game function, we then come across and we do a move alien bullets function. And again, this is pretty much identical to our player bullet stuff. So we're going to loop through every bullet in our alien bullets array. And of course, at the moment, I've set that to one. So there's only ever going to be one in here. But again, if we program it in this manner, then if we suddenly decide that we actually want more than one alien bullet, everything will just work. We won't have to come and modify our code. So we know that our bullet will time out. So we need to de decrement our timer. And that's what's happening on this line. So our bullet timer gets reduced by one. If that timer has now run out, then we need to kill that bullet. And again, we do that same as we did with our asteroids. We do a table.remove. So we're removing something from our alien bullets array. And again, the way we are looping through here, so doing using this um, for index bullet in I pairs alien bullets, that lets us create this variable index, which tells us which element in our alien bullets array we're currently working with. So down here, we can do a table.remove and remove the element specified by index from our alien bullets array. So that's if the timer's run out. If the timer hasn't run out, then we simply do our normal position update. So the bullet position, we call our helper function. Remember, our, we have a function called move point by velocity. And that assumes that we will give it an object and that that object will have a position inside it and a velocity inside it. And this function then just handles all of that. We then know that our bullets should wrap around the screen so that they don't just disappear off the edge of the screen, they come round again, come round again at us. And we have our wrap position. So we simply say our, our bullet position, we will update that with the wrapped version of the position. And that's all we need to do inside our move alien bullets function. We then, of course, need to draw it on the screen. So we have our draw alien bullets function. And again, that's doing the same thing again. We are going through each bullet in our array. And we are simply then drawing sprite number 16 at the bullet position. So let's see if that's going to work for us. So let's make sure we give that a bit of a run. And there we go. And then we come. And let's just wait and see if our alien ship appears. And hopefully he should then start firing some bullets at us. And they should either come straight at us or at least near to us anyway. And that seems to be working okay. So those bullets, they seem to be lasting long enough. Let me just move out of the way here a bit. And you can see there he is firing the bullets um, quite often very close to us. But I think that's good enough. We, can, we should be able to dodge those bullets um, if, if we are playing the game. 
Right, so our, our alien ship is now able to fire at us. We now need to start adding some collision detection, both for the bullets hitting us and then again for the alien ship crashing into us, um, that's going to be a possibility as well. So let's have a look and see if we can get that. So back to our code and let's have a think. The collision detection then is going to be in two parts where we're detecting whether our alien bullet has hit the player ship or whether the alien ship has hit the player ship. Now if we go up to our do play game function We'll see that we've sort of got the basic structure already in place for this. So we know that our, our player ship can actually crash into three things now. One, one is the asteroids and then we have the alien ship and its bullets. So we have a function already called check ship crash and whatever way our ship crashes or gets shot, it has the same effect where we will need to explode our ship and then go through the whole process of respawning our new player ship. So it makes sense for us then to use this check ship crash to actually put the detection in for us. If we go to this check ship crash function, so let's just do check ship crash function. We can see at the moment then, it is simply working through on the asteroids. So we have this local variable called local ship crashed. And we then loop through our asteroids using this while loop. And again, we're using this not ship crashed as part of our um, decision making in our looping structure. So that when we, when we, the first asteroid we find that we've hit, that will then quickly get us out of here and return back the idea that our ship has hit something. So we need to, somewhere in here, we need to come through, we need to um, continue doing our asteroids, but we also then need to, at this point, go through and check our player ship against the player bullets and then check our player ship against the alien ship to see if they've collided. And if any of those return back that the ship has crashed, then we need to send that message back from this function and then the rest of our code has already been written to handle the ship exploding and carrying on then to restart the game and so on. So all we need to do in here is to really detect the collision and flag it up and then we've already written the software to handle the rest of it. So. Have a think about how you can do that. Try and mimic some of the structures already in this, fun in this function. And I'll give you a few seconds and then I'll come back with my solution to it. So our check ship crash function then, let's have a look at how I've updated that. So inside here then, so this is our bit where we are doing our asteroid detection. And after that, our local variable, so ship crashed, will either be true that we've hit an asteroid or false that we haven't hit an asteroid. So the next one I'm going to do is the collision between the um, player ship and the um, alien ship. So we're saying here then, so if we haven't crashed into an asteroid, and the alien ship is currently on the screen, so it's active. Then we're going to check here. So our ship crashed variable will be equal to this test we do, which is polygon and polygon, where we send it in two of our vector ships, so our player ship and our alien ship. And this polygon and polygon function returns us back true if they have crashed together and false if they haven't. So at this point here, so um, if after this command, then ship crashed will tell us whether the two ships have crashed together. Okay. So again, then we're doing our, our next check. So again, this one's pretty much a copy of the asteroid one. So again, we're going to use a while loop to go through each of the elements in our alien bullets array. And we're going to keep on looping as long as we've got more bullets to check and that we haven't yet found one that's hit our ship. So again, we do our shipped crashed and that's going to be equal to our point and polygon check. So we're just using the actual position of our alien bullets. 
So to get the correct bullet we're looking at, we use alien bullets and then square brackets index. So that will pull out the bullet that we're currently checking. Grab hold of its position and check that against the player ship to see if that bullet position is inside the player ship. So if we found a bullet which has hit the player ship, yeah, so again, so ship crashed at this point will be true if we've got a, a bullet hit, false if we haven't. So if we've got a bullet hit, then we have to take this bullet out of the array. And remember, although we only have one bullet in the system, we're making it, we're programming everything in a general purpose way, assuming that there could be more than one bullet. So if we ever do decide to do that, everything is already written for us. And at that point then, obviously, um, because we're in a loop and it's a while loop, we have to manually increment our index counter and that will then go and check the next bullet if there happens to be one. So at this point then, so we check if we've hit an um, asteroid. If we have hit an asteroid, we will skip over this check and we'll also skip over the final check. If we haven't hit an asteroid, we will then check if, we've hit the, um, if the two ships have collided. If those have collided, then of course our ship crashed gets set to true and we skip the bullet checks. But if we haven't got a ship collision, then it will check each of our um, alien bullets and give us back our ship crashed if we have a bullet collision. Otherwise, up at the very top here, um, where it is, okay. Otherwise, we, we default the ship crash to be false, so it will keep its value of false unless it gets updated to true by one of our tests. So at the very end of our function, then we simply do a return ship crashed, and that will then hook back into our existing software and handle the ship exploding and so on. So let's see if that works. Let's do a control R and run that. Let me just go out of the way of that asteroid. And let's just wait for an alien ship to come. Here it comes, and there we get hit by the alien ship. Oh, and that's it colliding into us. So let me just show that. I think we haven't yet done the resetting of the alien ship after the um, collision. So let's just make sure it's actually still, the actual bit we've just programmed is working okay. So, right, so definitely it crashing into us works. And I think that was it shooting us working as well. So, one more go at that just to make sure. That our shooting us works. And here comes the alien ship, so hopefully he will shoot us at some point. And there he shot us. Okay. So obviously then our code is working, but our alien ship is not being reset correctly after we have this um, explosion effect. So let's have a look and see if we can sort that out. The ship exploding then is handled up in our game, do, do play game function. So let's go to our do play game function and see what's going on. So when our ship crashes or gets hit by a bullet or whatever happens to it. We change our game state to the state ship killed. So let's go and have a look at what happens there. So if we come up here, so our so when we are in game state killed, we then do a ship killed function. So let's look for our do ship killed function. So do ship killed function. Right. So do ship killed then it makes the sound effect for our explosion, it creates the explosion, takes a life away from us, and then sets a delay timer before then it changes game state to the ship kill delay. And, and that's a little delay to let things settle down for the next um, ship coming on. So at the moment our delay timer then is 120 seconds and really what we want to do here is we want to give our alien ship time to get off the screen. So we're going to let our alien ship finish its, its movement through the screen. So again this is if the alien ship has shot us. If, if it's crashed into us then that's not a problem, it will just um, respawn at some other time. But um, at the moment then we will have our 
alien ship coming through here. So let's just make that up to, remember this is in ticks, so if we make it up to 180, that gives us three seconds. We should give the alien ship time to get off the screen. So once that's done then, our, our, our ship then will do this do ship kill delay. So at this point we do this no ship display thing. So what's happening here is that we are waiting now for our, our ship to be respawned. And as we're doing that, we keep the rest of the display going. So that's the asteroids and so on. And obviously what we need to do in there is we need to keep our alien ship going. So we need to do this do no ship display. So let's see if we can find this do no ship display. So it should be down here. So here's our do no ship display. This is where we keep the display going while we are waiting to regenerate our ship. So at the moment we can see here, we're keeping our asteroids going. We're keeping our, any player bullets that happen to be in the screen there going as well. We're checking then for our bullets carrying on hitting things. Uh, and we're moving any particles, so all of our um, explosions will be continuing. But what we want to do in here as well then, we, we, we will need to keep moving our alien bullets. So we want to move our... So any alien bullets that happen to be on screen, we want those to continue moving so they will in effect die off because remember they only last for one second. So that will get those off the screen and kill them out. We also then want to move our alien ship so that it too continues its motion and goes off the screen and then gets ready to respawn again. And of course we'll need to make sure down here then that we draw our player bullets, we draw our alien bullets, and we draw our alien ship. So that should then give us our, our no ship display. So when, when we explode, or when we're hit, then that should give us a chance to get all the various things finishing off their movement across the screen. Because what was happening before was that our, our player ship was right on top of where our, our, sorry, our alien ship was right on top of where our player ship was respawning. And of course, because our no ship display wasn't updating it and moving it, when, when we respawned our player ship, our alien ship was left stuck where it was at the beginning of the cycle and just was instantly killing us again. So this should now let us, when, when, our, when we get hit, the alien ship should get a chance to get off the screen and then we'll then be continuing on with our normal respawning process which should then make the game work properly. So let's run that and see if that's got made it any better for us. Oh, avoid that. And let's just sit here and waiting and see if we can get hit by our alien. And there we go. So that lets the alien ship get off the screen. And there we're back nicely now. And if we crash into him, which is fairly hard to do. Oh. We crash, and off he goes as well. Okay, and again, our, our alien ship is respawning very, very quickly because we've, we've set all of our de time delays down to very low levels so that we don't have to wait around um, while we're doing our testing. So, um, that looks like we've pretty much got the game sorted out. So let's just go and just reset those um, alien spawn timers and reset it back to a full set of asteroids and let's see if that's our game ready to go. So back in here then. So let's go up to the top of our code and let's say up here, so where were we? So our number of asteroids then, we'll set that back up to be 10. We then have our init alien ship. So init alien ship. So we come in here and we set our spawn timer. So at the moment it's going between one second and uh, 10 seconds. So let's bump that up a bit then. So let's say our, our minimum time, and again, this is our first alien ship appearing in a level. So let's set that to, let's say 20 seconds as our minimum time. 
and it being this up, up to 40 seconds as our maximum time. And then we have a function which was called the spawn alien ship. And at this point then, so this is um, the subsequent alien ships, their delay time between um, coming on the screen and the next ship coming. Oh, and again, actually that is handled in this function end alien ship. Okay, so when the alien ship goes off the edge of the screen, we set its active flag to be false, and then we set the respawn timer. So this is gonna be the time so after we've had the first alien ship in a level, this will then be the respawn time to the next one. So this wants to be a bit less than the other one. So we've just had an alien ship through. So let's say it will be at least, um, let's say at least five seconds before the next one comes through. So that will be 300. Um, or it could be up to, let's say, uh, 15 seconds. Uh, so what would 15 seconds be? That would be uh, 900, wouldn't it? So between five seconds and 15 seconds, uh, let, let's say between 10 seconds and 20 seconds, shall we, for, for our next alien ship to come along. So that's that going through, and that should really be everything we need for our game. So let me just make sure I save my game here. And let's run it and see if we now have our full game of asteroids. So, let's see if I can stay alive long enough for this to happen. So here we go, so let's uh, get some shooting going. Hopefully then after a while we should... Oop. Again, if I can stay alive long enough. Come on, let's get a new ship in here, should be soon. And hopefully we'll get some alien ships appearing within some time. There he is. We got him. That's okay. It should be between, I think it was 10 seconds and 20 seconds, we should get another alien ship coming in. So where is he going to go? Fairly soon. There he goes. Oh. Oh, he's got me that time. So let's have a look then. So we should now be able to finish the level and then restart a new level. So there we go, and off we go. So I think we now have a full asteroids game. So let's just come out of this and see where we are. Right, so let's just make sure, I think I have saved it already, but let me just save once again, just to make sure I don't lose any of that work. And we now have our fully finished game of Asteroids. Well, I hope you have enjoyed that, and I hope you've had um, some, some good experience then of programming, and we've done a few more bits by yourself in this. So any, any, any issues you have with it, please go back through the videos, make sure you understand what you did or what you didn't do um, and work, all, work through there. But this now should give you, if you've been through the Space Invaders course and also now the Asteroids course, that should give you a very good grounding in your coding. So any of these sort of retro -y type games, you should have a very good chance now of being able to code them by yourself. So, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, please join me for the next lessons, or the next courses. Um, we'll be having a look at more Tick80 stuff, but also then moving probably into doing some Python coding, and hopefully then doing some electronics as well. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you like the videos, and make sure you watch out for the next courses. So have fun coding, and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more game programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.